most people that I see treat the experience section like a resume. Your prospects don't care about that. What they want to know is, can you help me? Can, do, do, you, do you know what my problems are? And do you have solutions for my problems? And then how do I get started? Hey, I am back with my friend and colleague, James Roloff, who is a true pro in sales and social sales. James, welcome back. Hey, thanks for having me here. I always appreciate time with you again. Yeah, so you and I were talking the other day, and you and your wife and business partner have really done great with LinkedIn marketing and the organic side. I know building personal brand, doing content there. I wonder if you could uh, share a bit about your approach there. I know you said uh, your profile itself is quite important, and then you guys are posting content, what, every day and doing all kinds of different stuff. So I just wanted to learn from you and share what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. So LinkedIn is great. I think it's got all sorts of reputations depending on where you're coming at it from. But at a basic level, what I typically tell people is to treat LinkedIn like a big networking event, right? Treat it like a big in-person networking event that you go to. There's all sorts of things that you can do at networking events, right? And you can lurk in the shadows and not talk to anybody, or you can go out and make some friends, or you can even potentially go up on stage and give a presentation and teach people at that networking event. There's different layers to what you're going to get out of it, depending on how deep you make that engagement with the actual platform itself. That's my basic analogy that might be bad that I use across the board with people, but it is a great opportunity to make connections and we have clients that have unlocked a ridiculous amount of opportunity for their business by simply just getting active, putting out good content, and starting conversations. So I'll pause for a second there. It's my little monologue. Yeah. yeah, that's great. You had a great post about kind of the different types of content and things you could put in the feed. I wanted to look at that, but then you said it really starts with the profile. And maybe we should say something too about your personal profile versus your company profile. But maybe we start there with personal versus company profile and then optimizing those. Yeah, so the company profile versus the personal profile is something that is gonna be different depending on your role, right? So if you're a solopreneur or an entrepreneur or a smaller business, it can be hard to figure out. And Egan, you're probably a test this. Hey, some thunder here at Madison. <laughs> so <laughs> you can probably test to this, but it can be hard. Do you invest your time building out your company profile or do you build out your personal profile? And if you're part of a larger organization, it's a moot point. Typically your marketing team runs the company brand, the company profile on a more strategic level on a brand side of things. But personally, I try and tell people to invest the majority of their efforts on LinkedIn onto their personal profile because you're gonna get a lot more reach and you're gonna be able to have a lot more of a personal engagement with it. And really the only thing you can't do on a personal profile that you can do on a company profile is do paid ads. And actually now, just recently, LinkedIn rolled out some thought leadership ad campaigns, which actually allow you to then run ad campaigns by boosting personal posts. It helps solve that problem, that personal versus company profile side of things. Long story short, I would definitely say focus on your comp or your personal profile more so than your company profile. Yeah, that makes sense, really. That personal brand piece, you can your connections see that stuff. LinkedIn and Microsoft, they're ready to charge you if you want to get your company in yes. front of people, but there's still a social media organic aspect of it for your personal profile. That's good. Should I pull up yours? Should I pull up Emma's? Is there an example we could look at and you could walk us through? Yeah, you can pull up my profile. I can see my pretty face. All right. Well, I'll be on double on the screen here. This is really yeah. a treat. Let's see. All right. So I'm so, looking at yours. Yep. Yeah. So I'll say right off the bat that there's all sorts of philosophies when it comes to how to optimize a LinkedIn profile. So there's no like right or wrong answer here. And this is just my personal take on what a good profile uh, looks like. So the big thing I want people to understand is that your profile is your landing page for all of your LinkedIn activity. So as you are out there commenting, connecting with people, making posts, people are going to see your profile. They're going to go to it and it's from there that they're going to do something. And I know you're, I don't need to tell you this, Egan, um, but it's basically like an online landing page. And what you do with that landing page can make a major difference in terms of performance you get out of it. So making sure you have clear messages about what you do, who you do it for, and the impact you create. Making sure you have lots of clear call to actions is a big part of it. So again, just looking at my profile, I have a nice headshot. There's a headline text directly below my profile. This is where you should very 
clearly state what you do and who you do it for and the results you can get from people. Because this is the kind of stuff people see in the comment section. They see this on the news feed if you're making posts. So this is like your big advertisement that quickly, within five seconds, needs to tell people what to do. But as you scroll down the page, you should very quickly have call to actions. So if you have LinkedIn Premium, there's those custom buttons. Right there, it says Save in Sales. Up oh, too far, you can, sorry. Scroll up a little mm -hmm. bit towards the top still. It says View My Blog. So my call to action there is View My Blog because from there, that's my lead funnel. So I have a blog, people subscribe to it, then they're my email list. So that's one of the things I, I promote on mine. But you can do other things there. Contact us, view my website, other things too. Basically, you want to have some sort of call to action there. And if you have LinkedIn Premium, so Sales Navigator, LinkedIn's like other miscellaneous premium or uh, recruiting, you can add a custom button there. Uh -huh. And then scrolling down, there's a section called the About section. This is your opportunity to talk a little bit more about what you do. So what you do, who you do it for, but also talk about your experience and your authority. It's talking about your what you've done for past your clients, how long you've been doing things, not making it all about you, but just showing people that you have some sort of expertise and some sort of credibility. So that's how I use that about section as well as have some call to actions in there too. So I talk about starting a conversation or joining my newsletter. So more opportunities there. Scroll down a little bit further, another very misunderutilized uh, part of your profile is your featured section. So you can pin posts there, the baseline side of things. So if you have good posts to talk about what you do or things you've done for your customers or are super educational, they're great to have there. You can also add video there. You can have links, external links, so links to your website or your case studies or whatever it might be. So again, another spot to have a call to action because again, your profile is your landing page. So you want to make sure people understand what you do, who you do it for, the impact you create, and then plenty of call to actions. And the same thing plays through down to the experience section. Most people that I see treat the experience section like a resume. They have like action verbs about things they've accomplished at their job. I hit President's Club five, five years in a row, right? But your prospects don't care about that. What they wanna know is, can you help me? Can, do, do, you, do you know what my problems are? And do you have solutions for my problems? And then how do I get started? So again, the same thing, talking in this case, down your experience section, a little bit more about your services and products, but then again, having call to actions, which in the experience section, you could do something called add media. So you can see there on my profile, the bottom left there, I have links to our community, which is a paid membership community, where we teach these topics and teach these things, as well as the links to some lead magnets, like our five day social selling planner. So if people wanna get started with social selling or learning some digital sales tactics, again, right there, call to action, people can click on it, go to it, go to our website, and they get started. So that's the profile. Again, if I was gonna give you the, the one sentence soundbite, treat it like a professional landing page and you'll get much better results from it. Love it. One thing uh, I, I really appreciate here too, is like you said, it's not a resume. You're not saying what your job responsibilities were. And also it's written to you. It's in second person time to digitally transform the way you sell. So even though it's about you and your experience at roll off consulting, it's really about them, the reader. And who, here's who this is for that alone. I've, I, I would say 99% of people don't have, how about, what do you think? Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's, it should be talking about the customer. Like I said, in the about section, I thread in some credibility about how long I've been doing things. I think I have two sentences in there. And then further down the page, I have recommendations, which everyone should seek to, which are basically testimonials that you can throw directly on your LinkedIn page. So there's spots to talk about your skills and what you've done for people. But really with the landing page, you want people to quickly identify themselves as someone that might want to be a purchaser of your products or services. Love it. Yeah. And boy, you, oh yeah, here's the recommendations. Here you go. Are you asking people for those then or clients or how do you get these? Yeah. So you can ask for them either as a button, actually, you probably can't see it in my profile, but if you're on your own profile, mm -hmm. you could ask for recommendations. Long. You could type in their name, any first connections, and then it'll send them a request and they can fill it out. I could even be better at that. I only have a few, but I think it's, you want to have a minimum of two or three in there just so it actually shows up. Love it. Yeah. I think you've really got great lead magnets here. I was looking at these where people can click right to here. They can actually then see basically your lead magnets. And it looks like, you've, you again, you're saying, here's who we are, here's what we do. And this is all about you, leverage digital strategy to grow your business. Yep. And then with this one, I love this, where it's go right into a free course where you've got an excellent lead magnet, five-day social selling course. It's free. There's four lessons. You can get it now. I see it like, this is just absolutely awesome here where you're getting people on your email list from LinkedIn. It seems like that's a major goal. Yeah, Absolutely. And a big part of our philosophy in general is about educating people. So we, we teach sales reps and marketing teams, and entrepreneurs, how to build a sales funnel by being that favorite teacher, right? So we walk our walk here by actually 
putting out educational content as part of our sales funnel. And there's plenty of people that engage with us who are not qualified for our services, but they might refer people and it helps us build up our community of like actual audience and not just customers too. So it's a great approach. Love it. Love it. This is excellent. I'm tempted to have you look at mine and see what you think and see what you say. Are you up for it? <laughs> yeah, I'm down for that. All right. Do you want to pull it up and share or should I pull it up? Why don't you pull it up so it actually looks correct on the screen? Okay. And maybe we can also see how we um, see it as other people too. I know there's a way to do that. So I'll share this. Yes. Here's me. So I'm seeing all this. I think there's a way to basically view as, how do we do that? profile. There's some way to view it the way other people oh. see it, or you just go incognito, right? Yeah, they, they had hard to do that for a while. Um, yeah, let's see. Maybe I'll pull it up, actually, now that you say okay. that. That way Sounds it is good. just, we're just actually talking about the, the real deal here. I'm looking at you. Yeah, what how do, what does someone else see? Yes. Like in SEO, we tell people, do incognito or private browser search just to get a sense of what are other people seeing. Your results might be personalized. Same story here. Yes. And hopefully the screen looks okay. Yeah, yeah this looks great. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate Perfect. this. Yeah, so right off the bat, nice professional head picture or headshot. That's great. This cover photo is a interesting topic because some people say you should ha definitely have a branded company thing. I'm actually a big fan of what you did here too, of just having a more personal branded picture. So you can, in this case for you, it's State Street, Madison, Wisconsin, where we live. So I think that's totally appropriate and talks more about who you are as a person. Your headline is good. It's a digital marketing agency partner. You don't just have your title and your company. It doesn't just say CEO, right? Sometimes people want to have the fancy stuff up there. I think that's good. You could probably have another quick dash in a sentence about what you do or the results you get for people or your approach necessarily. But I think from a basic level, it's good. I was thinking even uh, who we serve, like you said, of sometimes I ask, I tell people, we work with local businesses, e-commerce businesses, B2B. Maybe there's something about that of who are we serving with these services too. Something to grab people right yeah. away. But that being said, I think because what you have there, people know it and identify right away what you do. Request services is great. I would say I'd probably use that spot. Do you have LinkedIn Premium? Okay, you don't. Yeah. If you got oh, LinkedIn Premium. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> which honestly makes it almost worth it. Another thing I'll note there too about that is a quick side tangent. The button you put there, so I have view my blog, but you can do other things like view my website. It not only shows up on your profile, but it also shows up on the newsfeed. So as you're doing posts, it will show up under your name on the newsfeed as an external link. And we have seen a definite uptick in traffic coming from LinkedIn simply by adding that button. So it is worth the $69 a month or whatever it is for premium if you are going to be doing content on LinkedIn because you will get more clicks uh, solely from that. So quick side tangent there. That, that's great. Sounds like that's a good way. You've got those lead magnets set up. It's a way to get people then onto your email list from there. I'll definitely do that. Thank you. Yes. So your about section is actually pretty similar, similar to mine, right? So it's a little bit deeper about what you do, which is great. You have your call to actions down below there. What I would say is if this, this would be a spot to maybe brag a little bit, Egan, quickly talk about how long you've been doing this or sharing some quick results of how many clients you work with, that kind of thing, just to give yourself a little bit more of that authority behind what you're doing, right? Hopefully the content you're producing is creating authority for you as well. But I think you can have a sentence or two in here about your past success or your amount of experience you have there. Yeah, case studies, numbers, proof, that's a great place, right? Yeah, even yep, not social open. proof, testimonials maybe. Yes, not overdoing it, obviously, but one or two, I think, is great in there. Services is great as well. This is something that if your service area is an option for you on LinkedIn, you could definitely add in there, which is wonderful. You have some great featured content, again, showing off your authority. It looks like it's probably a different type of things that you do. I would say, if you don't have it, I'm looking, but you can have... I would say throw in things like your website. So make yeah. it a mix of uh, featured items, some that are educational, some that show some authority, and some that are strictly lead generation, right? Websites or sending people the lead magnets that you have that are some sort of valuable resource that they can enter an email address and get. That'd be one thing I would say is maybe have some other options because depending on where somebody's at in their buying, jo buying journey, they might be ready to take a deeper step than simply look at past posts you did. Love it. Thank you. Going down, this is good experience. So again, you did a good job here of talking again a little bit deeper about what you do from your role, which is again, something that I mentioned is that don't make this a resume, make this more about the products and services you offer and talk more about it. I will say right away, make sure you add media here, right? So down below, mm -hmm. you have the opportunity here to add more media, which is basically adding more featured items. But this is a great spot, minimum, 
everyone should add their company website because in order to get to your website from here again i have to go i have to click on this mm -hmm. i have to go to the about section i have to go deal. down to here right mm -hmm. yeah so linkedin doesn't want you to go to their company website right away mm -hmm. but if you have it right here on the media section that's a very easy way to get to it so baseline i would do your company website but if you have other lead magnets or other valuable resources you can post there, you can add them there as media as well. Thanks. Yeah. What strikes me is I have a podcast with over 100 episodes that's going strong. And it's, you wouldn't even know that unless you no. <laughs> read closely here. So that needs no. to be in there. Yeah. So that's another great thing, too. This is where it gets tricky when you have so many different things, which, again, going back to that landing page philosophy, what do you want people to do? And that is something I've seen before where people are actually like prolific entrepreneurs or content creators. And you go to their LinkedIn profile, but you actually don't even know where to go because they have so much stuff and they're talking about so many things where I think it does sometimes make sure it makes sense to optimize your profile for the actual conversion or action you want them to take is our thought process there. Love it. Thank you. Otherwise, you graduated with honors. So you're a smart dude. So that's great. You have education down there. Skills. So you have some skills here. I'd also try and get some more endorsements if you can for the main things. I know you're very good at this stuff. It looks like you already customized this. I'm guessing you probably have other skills that you have a lot more of. So that's one thing I'd note too, like SEO. Exactly. You can, this is for your audience here, you can shift around skills. So make sure that the skills you have highlighted at the very top of your skill list are ones that you want people to know you for, Thank which you again, man. looks like you did that, right? And then I'm, you have I'm some... I'm proud that Andy Crestadina endorsed me for SEO. That's, that's, hey, that's, 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 that's like, a very high mark. <laughs> that's the best, that's my best news all day on a Friday. Thank you. You can move that back up there. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. Uh, but yeah, so do you have some more uh, recommendations, making sure you're giving them to, which is great. So yeah, overall, you have a very good profile. And there's very few, I'd say, like complaints about things I would say that you should do or shouldn't do. Um, but I would say maybe a couple more call to actions through those resources in the media section, but you're good to go. Love it. Awesome. This has been so valuable. I hope uh, people watching this get some great ideas for their profile as well. So thanks so much, James. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me.